Hey guys, what's going on? So with the Deadpool and Wolverine movie grossing over $1.28 billion worldwide, I really think there's something there to go back and study. So I just wanted to look at the total evolution of Deadpool as a character. And this is going to be both on and off the screen, but I am going to be looking at this from a slightly more creative lens in terms of his character development. So starting off, we know that Deadpool was created by Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nisiza, and he was first published in December of 1990. And then you have the cover being released just a few months after that, so in February 1991. So I would say that December 1990 date is really the birth of Deadpool. And I think what's really remarkable here is that you have Deadpool really being one of the more newer developed superheroes or comic book characters in comparison to the classics such as Batman or Superman or the Avengers dating back even 50, 60, or 70 years. So I think it's really interesting to see how far he's progressed in such a much shorter span of a time frame, even though I would also argue throughout this analysis that a lot of that has even been slowed down a little bit. I think we even could have gotten to this point a lot sooner. But nevertheless, we know that Deadpool was inspired by a few different popular comic book characters before him, such as Spider-Man, Wolverine, Snake Eyes, and of course, Deathstroke from DC. And you have a few different elements here being tied in from each character. You have the mask for Spider-Man being one of the main inspirations here, as well as Spider-Man really developing a lot of his smack talk in the early comics where you have Spider-Man kind of not just taking things so seriously, but talking a little bit to his opponents. So that was really a personality element that really has been taken and ran with with Deadpool. And then for Wolverine, you of course have his healing factor being the main inspiration there. And then I think it's pretty ironic given you have the movie being shared between the two of them now in 2024. And in terms of Snake Eyes, you don't really have a whole lot. I would say, if anything, Snake Eyes is really just a polar opposite. But you have kind of more of the ninja and assassin vibe being taken there. And then in terms of Deathstroke, we have the name Wade Wilson really being a reference to Slade Wilson. And then you have a lot of his same characteristics in terms of how the character is styled and what weapons he uses. So I think somewhere in the middle of that, you get... Deadpool, and we have a lot of the other writers and developers that worked on his character. Really like the different weapons that were used throughout the different Avengers members, so that's really what inspired them to give some more unique weapons to Deadpool, in addition to kind of just envisioning a version of Spider-Man that would run around with guns and swords, so that's where you get a lot of the different elements of Deadpool tied in there. And we know that his first appearance actually wasn't as a hero or maybe more appropriately labeled as an anti-hero he really debuted as a villain and we see him being hired to attack the new mutants here as the main antagonist in this early comic and you do get a pretty similar cycle to this starting at the beginning of his movie career we're going to later see that with x-men origins wolverine so this is what really started him off, and then you have a pretty decent reception, nothing too much crazy yet, which really inspired them to do more with Deadpool. And then you have his guest appearances following this. We see him with the Avengers, we see him with Daredevil, and this would really lead into a miniseries starting about 1993 going into 1994. And this would really be where we see a lot of the major developments in Deadpool's character. You have Fabian working a lot on this here, but you also have other developers joining in as well to give their own personal thoughts on the character. And just something to note here, we have a few different ownerships of Deadpool throughout his evolution, but he did in fact debut as a Marvel Comics character, so he had a huge team and pool working on his development and starting in this mini series that's really where we see the direction of deadpool take off in terms of his humor his wit his sarcasm and breaking the fourth wall and really being an extremely unorthodox version of a superhero or just a comic book character in general this is where we saw a lot of different 
experimental things being done. And what really connected the fans to Deadpool and what really started his following at this early point was those unique elements such as Deadpool having both a combination of villain and hero tendencies. And what really connected with a lot of people was him breaking the fourth wall, was him speaking directly to the audience, almost as if he was conscious in his own story. And we really haven't gotten a whole lot of this before Deadpool. You really have the closest thing being the Joker in a few comics, also hinting at having some consciousness of just being a fictional character. You have that really being solidified with Deadpool, and that's really what caught a lot of people's attention in these miniseries. And I would say not only that, but you also have Deadpool just being a lot more relatable, almost due to having a direct conversation of some sorts with the audience so for whatever reason that was really the bread and butter that made deadpool and that's really what we see today in his character but staying to this time frame we see a few developments following the miniseries in 1997 is when deadpool would get his own first title so we see different volumes being developed here and we see more of a solidification of these new tendencies for a main character and we also get a lot of the friends that we see later in the big screen they would come in this 1997 title we also even see deadpool appearing in some wolverine comics we also see some of them teaming up and fighting which really probably inspired a lot of the different aspects of the 2024 movie and then in 2009 that's when we would see his big screen debut in x-men origins wolverine but he wouldn't have too much of a major role in this we see wade originally being one of the team x members following his military service and here he's also kind of still being a mercenary for hire we see his death in the movie here but we later see him being brought back to life as some sort of an experimental villain having a lot of the mutant powers and then that's where we get our big boss fight with him in wolverine at the end of the movie where he is defeated but you have the after credits kind of hinting at him still being alive and i would say here you really don't have too much of a good reception for deadpool or whatever type of villain that he was actually specified as in the movie and i would say the poor reception in this movie here would really hinder his development especially on the big screen following this you also have later ryan reynolds portrayal as green lantern not being too greatly received either so that also really hindered deadpool's opportunities for the big screen but also following this, we would get more development of his story and more comic books and books in general. We would see what also would be inspired later in the now 2024 movie. In 2010, we would get a lot of the alternate versions of Deadpool being created here. This would be including the female version or Lady Deadpool. We would also see the development of Headpool and Kidpool as well as Dogpool. And these are several of which would appear in the team up scenes with all of the different versions of Deadpool being a part of the 2024 movie. So I think it's neat to see how they would continue to expand on his character here. But going back to the movies, we have the 2011 Green Lantern film really hurting any chances of Deadpool being greenlit for Fox. Going back to X-Men Origins and Wolverine, this would all be under Fox before later being acquired back to Marvel, which is what we get in the 2024 movie. But during this time, we always saw plans that they had for Deadpool, but just didn't really want to go forward with it because it was targeted to be a rated R movie. And we really hadn't gotten a lot of those, and we still haven't in terms of superhero movies turning a little bit further away from the family style. So for whatever reason, we know that it was pretty much halted at this point. You do have some test footage being experimented with at Fox, but wasn't really that convincing enough. And we're really seeing Deadpool kind of being put on the back burner 
until which I think is a pretty interesting unfolding of events in 2014. You have some of that original test footage being leaked out to the public online and you really see a surprisingly good response to what this test footage shows in terms of seeing Deadpool in his more authentic self to the original comics and a lot of those mini stories that developed in the 90s. And in comparison to what was given in X-Men's Origins, this really seemed like a clear path forward in what audiences wanted to see from Deadpool on the big screen. So this event is really what inspired the movie to eventually get greenlit. But we really don't have too much of a budget here. You have about 58 million for the first Deadpool movie. That's why we see a lot of corners being cut. And following that early positive reception of that test footage, you also have a really good reception following the release of the first Deadpool movie in 2016. Following that $58 million budget, this was able to turn into an extremely profitable film coming in just about $786 million here. And this at the time would be the highest grossing R rated movie. And again, following that test footage, I think what really worked here is that People were really pleased with this version of Deadpool that was really just following the comics to a T and putting it on the big screen. And in addition to that, I think you really have Ryan Reynolds being the perfect casting here. And he just wasn't utilized as properly or just wasn't able to bring out the character as much as he wanted to in the Origins movie. And also in addition to the film just being good itself and also in terms of word of mouth, you really had a good marketing strategy for this movie. Also, since the budget was really limited here, you had the marketing agency really wanting to utilize the internet and especially social media just because it was a lot cheaper of an avenue for bringing attention to this movie. And while Deadpool definitely wasn't the first to utilize online marketing for movies. It definitely solidified this as being the new path forward or one of the new paths forward. And since you have such a good reception here and a successful turnout for this movie, you do have Deadpool 2 being greenlit right away and then we later get its release two years later in 2018. And you have Deadpool 2 being just as successful as the first Deadpool movie you have a box office finish at about 785 million. So really just exactly the same, but you do have the budget being up to 110 million. And I think again, a lot of the same things that worked in the first movie were done again here and really would push Deadpool forward as being a major movie superhero character. And then now in 2024, I'd say Deadpool is even more popular than he was before. And I'd say we do have somewhat of a decent turnaround, but that six year gap between Deadpool 2 and Deadpool 3 or Deadpool and Wolverine is a little bit of a stretch here, but I wouldn't say that's really due to any sort of hesitation on the movie's success. I would say if anything, that's really just due to a lot of the different transferring in terms of the ownership between this period between Fox and Marvel. And then you have a lot of the different strikes going on a few years prior in addition to COVID. And I'd say in the third movie, what does really take it over the edge here is his collaboration with Wolverine, even though you still have Deadpool being the center of attention and you still have Deadpool being the lead even though you have Hugh Jackman right there with him and then now we know that Deadpool 3 has surpassed the first Deadpool movie in terms of being now the new highest grossing R-rated movie and I think just going back and looking at it from a big picture you do have a lot of different trial and error that was done pretty quickly over the span of about 30 or 35 years for the creation of Deadpool. Just getting him out there I think was a good move but obviously didn't stick to be the original villain that he was in his first debut in the comics and the original villain that he was in his debut on the big screen. So I really think just due to both of those examples, you really have that path of him being a lot more clumsy and a lot more silly and still having morals, but not really being what you'd expect in terms of pure superhero material. And I'd say early on, it's a little bit easier to not exactly have seen that. 
in his comic debut. But in the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, for example, I think it's really something to learn for here is that his character was just taken too far away from what was working and what really made him a unique protagonist from the beginning. And I think you do have elements of that that weren't really as bad. Maybe in more of the first half of the movie, we see a lot of the good characteristics in Ryan Reynolds that would be a good fit for Wade Wilson. But in terms of Deadpool versus the version of the villain that we get towards the end of the movie, I really think that was just way too far off in terms of what fans were expecting and in terms of the formula that was created in the comics. Because just thinking about Deadpool from a general sense, you really have a lot of his one-liners and his dialogue being what sells him and really connects him with the fans. And to sew his mouth shut for this version of him, it just really doesn't make sense because that is his bread and butter. So nevertheless, sometimes it does take time to learn some of those crucial lessons and to really go back to the roots of what worked before. I think that's why you were able to get Deadpool really sore in terms of his box office presence and you ultimately have the market deciding in terms of the audience really being the ones to speak directly or indirectly in terms of the vision that they wanted from Deadpool whether it was just from an early age in terms of his early developments in the comics what really spoke out to those unique elements of him breaking the fourth wall really being what started his virality in those earlier stories and what really continues his unique presence today. So feel free to let me know your thoughts on his character. Really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you later.